Hello, I'm Neil. We're going to be doing something not out here, but in here in the corner of the kitchen where the TV is. This is the channel where we try something we I try something new every day to make the family happy. And today I'm going to make the family happy with this. I'm going to try and get a TV shelf going in the corner of the kitchen slash living room slash the room where we do everything. This is a tricky one because I've got something temporary going. This shelf is completely fake. It's not even wide enough. It's just a bit of rough wood that the builders left. Uh, I think they mixed cement on it, but I, it was all I could put up here. But the main TV shelf is down here to hold all the boxes. Well, we still have DVDs. Is that because we're old parents? Probably. But we've also got consoles and a uh, freeview box, which is behind that bench. So at the moment, we've just got temporary stuff here just to soften it. It looks better than it being completely bare. So how do you make a TV shelf, though, or sort of the shelving unit, or just shelves to put around a, a big TV? This has been a tricky one for us because we, I don't think we were even convinced that this is the right place for the TV, but it's been about six months now and this is where it is. We've got a sofa. This is pretty much the only place to have the sofa. There is such a big distance from sitting here to the TV being over there. It's about four meters. And I tried to get around that by rigging up a cable. I don't know if you can see this audio cable. So at least we've got a speaker where we sit. So. <laughs> we can actually hear the TV all the way over there and it is a long way away. I think this camera is going to make it look a lot closer. But this is the view at the moment, which isn't too bad. I've got an Ikea bench down there. There's a whole video on how I built that bench on this channel. It's an Ikea Perjahan bench and it's great, but it is designed for sitting on. It's not designed for, for putting boxes. I've taken the boxes off to try and measure up and get the right wood for this area. It's a big piece of wood that I need. <laughs> so. Okay, I've got the wood, time to get it cut now, just over here. When I was building the L-shaped bench sides, which again is another video on the channel, I got the wood cut into strips for our bench in the corner of the kitchen over there. That's worked out really well, but it was a huge piece of wood. I went to a DIY superstore, B&Q in this case, I usually flick between that and, and Wix. It's one of these and went on the hunt for the perfect piece of wood. And obviously the bigger the wood, the more expensive it is. So I went for this, it's plywood. I always like the look of plywood. I like these strips down the side of the wood, but it was a pretty huge sheet of wood that I needed to get. I knew that if I cut the strips for the, the bench over there, I'd have a big piece left. And the big piece is going to be the centerpiece. It's going to, going to be the big shelf that's going to hide everything, hopefully. I even had enough left over for two other shelves underneath. But this is footage of me trying to get it desperately off the shelf <laughs> and also film it so that I could share my technique with you. My technique being that if I whip it off, like when you pull a tablecloth off a table and leave everything standing on the table, I tried that with this giant piece of plywood. It didn't quite work the first, uh, I think, five times. But here I am, just giving it one more yank. One, oh no, it's just, it's just twisting round. And also they, they left a big trolley in front of it to, just to make it that little bit difficult. But it just makes the wood even more special. And with one final tug, I've managed to, to get it out. Next challenge, of course, is to get it onto a trolley and over to the cutting area. I'm sure I would have got help if I'd asked for it, but I'm a man and you know, asking for help is weakness, especially in the DIY realm. The cutting service were absolutely brilliant. I had, I've got this, <laughs> this is my map. You've probably seen this on the bench video, but I managed to work out how to divide a 1.2 meter by 2.4 meter giant piece of plywood into what I needed for the old bench and for the TV area. And the, the guy, he, he must be so used to scraps of paper with bad biro on and a mixture of meters and centimeters and millimeters. So I've got it cut, it looks perfect, look at it. Just what I wanted, one of those. So we go to the checkout now. I saw some reviews about this particular piece of wood saying it's really bad and it falls apart, but here's me unloading it from the car, managed to get it back in one piece or in my case, about 12 pieces. And this is the wood right here. I think it looks amazing. It is 
a cheap bit of wood uh, in the scheme of things. Although, you know, I paid 50 quid for, for the giant sheet. So it's not, it's not that cheap, but this is going to be the main shelf. The big challenge I've got now is that I was a bit too precise in my measurements. So I've scored a little bit off the edge here. I'm gonna cut the edge right now. First thing is to protect the wood from my grotty Ikea Siglaro table. We've got all sorts on here. So I'm just laying out a blanket. So it's got a nice cushioned underlay and I've marked out a straight line. Well, the line is straight, but it's not square, but I've taken a, a best guess at a proper square from the front and rear edge here. And I'm gonna take off about half a centimeter. I'm going to use a mitre saw and just use that to cut the straight line that I've marked out along the end of this bit of plywood. This is how it will look, obviously without the bench. But two things, I, I wanted the, the nice door bought side on this side instead of my rough sawing, but I can sand that down. The biggest challenge now is to build some kind of ledge for it. I don't want to wreck these kitchen cabinets because they cost a fortune and who knows how we might want to change it long into the future. I don't want like screw holes in here. This is going to be nearly impossible to change. So I'm going to build, <laughs> um, I'm going to build like a ledge that will go up made of this wood. The shelf will just sit on top of that leg. How high would you make your TV? bench leave a leave a comment down below i'm kind of happy with this height of shelf and i've left almost the same amount of space underneath so there's some kind of symmetry to it but i don't want it to feel too boxed in also one day maybe one day we'll get a bigger tv the whole family are on at me to to do that but i've got a bit more space just to make that tv uh, even more huge than it already is uh, the next tricky bit is to whip out this bench <laughs> Whoa! Of course I leave all the electronics loose underneath while I do this. The shelf is 50 centimetres deep, so I'm cutting this batten down to 40 centimetres so that it won't be sticking out at the edge. Hopefully if I do this right it could even look like it's floating. And to do that I'm going to take off this diagonal edge from the end so that the, the block holding up the shelf sort of looks uh, invisible from the front. Look, I know it's 2022 and it's not a thing anymore, but I just want to see if I can get a DVD under it. These were my shelves before, my last shelves. See, I don't like the big brace here, but that was heavy enough to carry a really heavy TV before this one. So this one is just a little bit bigger than the Transformers Dark of the Moon DVD. I'll take it back to my new shelf. And this is where the, the bracket's going to be. So I'll just drill these pilot holes here using a really thin drill bit and keeping an eye on the spirit level to make sure this bracket stays straight. I'll put a big drill bit in. So now we'll get the screws in and get this bracket onto the wall. I'm going to screw one side in lightly first and then get the other screw in just to make sure it's all lined up. Let's check that it's level. No, it's, yes, it's just a really slow bubble. So one side done, level and strong. Let's cut this bracket to size. Obviously it's a lot shorter than the last one. And I'll get the countersink drill bit out again just to knock in a couple of holes. So I'll just lift the shelf up to where I want it to be without bending the wires too much. That is about as high as it goes. Any higher it's gonna really be difficult to put plugs in. So I need a bit of wood to go on the right hand side here. Oh, will it be the correct height though? It won't stand up by itself, it's so not straight. Yes, <laughs> success! <laughs> That's the first one done. The next part of my scheme is over here. I'm gonna put another leg up here to bring it up to the correct height for this bracket here. Is my measuring up to the task. Now I can take this, whoa, into here, nearly hit the roof there. And then I can put it under here, just to have it balance on that. Oh, will it fit, will it fit? Will it fall over? Just 
check with the spirit level. Spot on. Yes. That works. See, I didn't think it'd be this far forward. This is 50 centimeters deep. I wonder if it should be 40, but we can leave it like this for now. And I can always take 10 centimeters off the back if it's too proud. Now I've got a special drill bit. I think it's my favorite drill bit where you can actually drill holes large big holes into the back of the shelves this is so that i can run the cables down and run the shelf flush all the way to the back of the wall and the cables and wires can all go down this little hole at the back here so i'll just put one into the big shelf at the top and then i can do the same for the little shelf and if i wanted to run cables all the way to the bottom i can and they can run through the shelves the final thing I need to do for the TV corner is to put a better shelf up above the TV. Now the plan was to have two shelves up above, but um, I only bought one IKEA Grand Holt shelf bracket pair. That's what they look like. I wanted to try one pair just to see if it works and it really does. So now that this shelf is up, I've got to figure out a way to get some more wood that is identical without buying a massive two meter sheet of it and then cutting it to size just for that second shelf above that shelf. So we've got two shelves at the top and two shelves at the bottom. I think this is done. Let's, let's dress it and give you some beauty shots just to show you what it, what it really should be looking like. I am calling this a Dad Delivers Funk success. <laughs> it's done, it's finally done. Thanks for being awesome and hitting the thumbs up button to help others find this video and subscribing to more adventures for you and me around the house to make our families happy. Can you please help my daddy get 10,000 subscribers? Just click on his face. Thanks, bye. All right, this is gonna be the proper one, Mike.